Hey there. Welcome to another episode of Heart and Hustle. Visionary healers, movers, and shakers. I am your host, Paulette Riestini, here to bring you magic makers from around the globe. People who are creating change, who have small businesses, large businesses, hobbies, but they are creating the life of their dreams. And that, my friends, is what living is all about. So let us know how you like this episode. Please subscribe and we'll see you there. Thanks for joining. All right. Welcome to another episode of Heart and Hustle. And this is the first one of 2023. Yay! Uh, I know, right? I know. It's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. I'm back. We're back. And uh, it's been, it's definitely been several weeks since I've brought any, any beautiful people to you, my friends. I am Paulette Ristini. I am your transformational lifestyle coach. And I help you creative women step up into the next phase of your beautifulness, your awesomeness, your creativity, your abundance. And I love bringing you people who are creating magic, who are making change in the world, who are magic makers and healers and movers and shakers, which is what Heart and Hustle is all about. So today I get to bring you Winnie Wang is here from Pasadena, California. Well, I happen to be in Ohio today, <laughs> which is not my usual place. Uh, and Winnie, thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me here. I I feel really honored to be a part of this heart and hustle community and just want to give a warm hello to everybody who's listening right now. Awesome. 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 So we were we were chatting briefly before we started recording and then I was like, "Wait, don't say any more." Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a great conversation. So, first of all, Winnie, why don't you tell us about your mindful healing? company, your business, what you do? Sure. So in very short, um, I am a licensed acupuncturist that specialize in releasing trauma from the body. Mm -hmm. And I work with both science and spirituality. So I actually have four science degree, including computer science and finance from MIT and marketing from NYU. And then my last degree is in Oriental medicine. Oh man, you're not old enough to have all those. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm very science-driven, data research-based, but then, you know, I also had this near-death car accident awakening that happened to me in 2017. And I really think that I'm very blessed because before that, I never meditated and I was completely disconnected from, you know, source, God, universe, whatever you want to call the higher power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had this awakening. And since then, I've been on a very spiritual path and seeking the truth. And so what I love about what I do is I'm able to take my clients onto a healing journey where it's really fun because it's grounded in the data you know mm -hmm. what i mean by data right the body keeps the score right so usually people come to me maybe they have lower back pain maybe they have diarrhea constipation insomnia you know maybe they have headache dizziness brain fog low energy and, you know, I combine my medical training, you know, that's years and years of um, sitting in the classroom and memorizing textbooks, <laughs> my study of anatomy and physiology, but also, you know, my spiritual channels. Mm. And, you know, somehow I became a medical intuitive, so I can, you know, just feel where the trauma is stored in the body. And one thing that I realized is, well, I can only help one person at a time if I am a licensed acupuncturist local to Pasadena. How can I help more people like mm -hmm. all of the audience that's listening mm -hmm. to right now? So I wrote a book called Honoring Darkness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Embrace shadow work to nourish and grow your power. 
And because with my clinical experience, I found that 70% of the problems such as eyesight problem, nasal allergies, and, you know, food allergies, and all of these is actually related to, guess what, our thinking mind. Our thinking mind, you know, when it generates thoughts that are related to greed or hatred or, Mm. you know, this illusion of separation, like I'm separate from you, it creates these emotions such as fear, anger, unworthiness, shame, grief, right? And these are the things that actually cause diseases. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So- Uh So basically, I'm very passionate about sharing uh, shadow work, because imagine you can not just heal from your chronic illness, but actually prevent yourself from getting cancer and all of these other, you know, Western medicine, we call reason unknown, you know, why do we guess like, I don't know. (laughs) But it's not actually true. You know, I really believe that at some level, we create the illnesses. Mm -hmm. I I agree with you. And if we are willing to take responsibility, hey, you know what, like I, it is my thinking mind that created the cancer. And if I change my mind, then I can, you know, change the outcome, right? If you boil down, what is cancer? Cancer is a cell growing, growing, growing out of control Mm -hmm. right so you get to look at what part of your life or your thinking mind do you allow to grow out of control right maybe there is some negative self-talk you know maybe there is some grudge or anger that you're holding on to Mm -hmm. maybe there's some grief or shame So what I love to do is lead people on this journey. So I have this uh, 11 week course where, because I'm a nerd, (laughs) (laughs) I systematically lead people um, through the shadow work. And yes, I am a professor in acupuncture. So uh, yeah, so I I love just doing what I do, which is being creative. And and just combining. So do you combine your acupuncture with your your Reiki and your shadow work. I mean, it's all, see, I love that so much because I'm multi-passionate like that too. So I love to combine all, you know, and, and what you said earlier, I'm like, I mix the woo with the practical. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Cause you gotta have both. <laughs> so I have a lot of respect for purists also, you mm. know, people who are pure science or pure spiritual the way I think about it is that the masculine principle, they are very penetrating and focused. I mean, mm-hmm. if you if you close your eyes and picture a male genital organ, it is concentrated and penetrating and it has a single direction. <laughs> okay, so yes. if you're more, you know, associate yourself, you know, these days we have gender fluidity, if you more associate yourself with qualities of masculinity, then you would be more single-minded in the way that you live and breathe. And that's perfect. That's the way that God made you, you know, but I identify as a woman. Mm -hmm. And if you close your eyes and picture the women genital organ, it's like a black box but it receives everything. Mm. And it's part of the mystery. You can't see, you know, it's inside. It's as opposed to the male genital is outside. You can touch, mm-hmm. see, feel. The the woman, the uterus, you can't go inside and touch inside and see inside. It's just the mysteries. Mm. So for me, um, I I work more like that. There's a something mysterious about me and I'm able to receive 
you know, the science and the spiritual and just receive everything around me and then weave that together. And I think that that is the rise of the divine feminine that oh, all of yes. us, right? <laughs> all of us that enjoy weaving, pulling this together, pulling that and and okay. creating something new. That's us being the embodiment of divine feminine. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I want to go back for a minute. So you had this death defying experience in 2017 and then all of a sudden you're intuitive <laughs> tell me about that little process there <laughs> yeah 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 um it's it's a journey it's not instantaneous you know i want to talk back about this accident because up until that point I was kind of like a monster, you know, I'm like the mother that you don't want to have and the wife that you don't want to have. <laughs> you know, as a mother, I was filled with fears and worries. I was mm. like, ah, is, is anybody hanging out with my daughter? Who is she having lunch with? Is she popular at school? You know, is she being bullied? You know, I just have an uncontrolled mind, just generating infinite worst case doomsday scenario as a mother. <laughs> and then as a wife, I'm the worst. Um, at that time, I was the master of holding grudges. Everything pissed me off. Everything that my husband did was wrong. You know, oh, I, I was I was very good at pointing finger at everything that he was doing wrong. And at the time of the accident, I was literally living in the past, everything mm. that he did wrong and living in the future, everything that can go wrong with my children. And I was completely missing the gifts of the present moment. And then when the car was like, you know, three, two, one seconds hitting, you know, um, the impact, it's really cheesy, but I literally had all the flashback in me all of a sudden just play. I was like, oh my God, if I don't die, I'm not going to live in the past and the future anymore. Like I'm not going to be this angry wife and this fearful mother. And of course I'm still here. So I didn't die. You did not die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not die. Thankfully. Yeah. And, you know, I realized I can't keep living the way that I was living because oh that's the funny thing and 10 days later I had another car accident oh my god and I was like Winnie you can't have a car accident every 10 days like if that is not a sign from the universe that you need to do something very drastically different I don't so, know what, so what did yeah. you do <laughs> yeah so I mean were you injured where was it were you badly injured no that's the thing it was like it was like God came down and had this bubble around me. Ooh. Not even one hair was out of place. It was as if I left my body and I just watched the whole thing happen. Like the airbags were not deployed. My whole bag was flushed against the seat as if I was lounging in a movie theater or beach chair. Not one injury happened to me. It was almost like... I don't know, some very powerful force came down and said, not and, your time. Right, you're not ready. <laughs> no, not your time. You still got something to do. And I remember being really in all about that because I watched this car in front of me turn into a raisin, yet not even, my back wasn't even off the chair. It was just as if I was watching this whole movie. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So I, I really felt at that point, okay, so this is something confession, right? <laughs> so up until that point, I really dreaded talk therapy. Because I felt like talk therapy is somebody telling me everything that I'm not doing right. 
And I really didn't want to face my monster, like how I'm an angry and fearful person. I wasn't ready to hear the truth. I wasn't ready to talk about the truth. And, you know, after that incident, I was like, okay, well, maybe it's time for me to face the truth. And so that's when I started talk therapy. I started, you know, learning Reiki. I started meditating. So, (laughs) so I, before the accident, I was avoiding the truth. Now, were you, were you an acupuncturist before that? Yeah, that's a great question. So I was already um, in in school for acupuncture. So I was halfway through the program at that time. And that was such a blessing because it allowed me to specialize in mental health. Yeah. So, you know, acupuncture is like Western medicine. You can specialize you know, in orthopedic, in fertility, in cosmetics. And because of my life, I, and all the traumas that I've had, you know, in my book, I talk about, you know, childhood traumas and rape and divorce and parental alienation. So I talk about all my traumas. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I became, you know, and acupuncturists that really specialize in helping people release trauma from the body. Nice. Nice. Wow. That's amazing. And so, wow. And so you combine Reiki, you combine acupuncture and what's your methods for working with people who have trauma in the body? Yeah. So, you know, First of all, if all the audience listeners have never tried acupuncture before, I just recommend you go on to Yelp and find somebody with, you know, good reviews. Yes, I totally agree. I love acupuncture. Oh. Yeah. If you've never tried it before, man, I th- I give this analogy like going to the dentist. If you don't go to the dentist twice a year, I mean... I don't know why you would want to do that because we need some deep cleaning. Yeah. And to me, once a month acupuncture is like visiting the dentist twice a year. It's like the bare minimum. If if you don't have any traumas, if you don't have any lower back pain, no active issues, I recommend once a month as routine, you know, cleaning your pipes, if you will. <laughs> Uh, But that being said, um, by combining it with Reiki breathwork spiritual practices, I am able to deliver the experience without physically touching that person, Mm -hmm. right? So I, I do group healing and it's over Zoom and you don't actually need to be physically in person to experience the benefits of moving energy in the meridians and organs. So, so that is why, you know, if I, I, I want to come to your zoom class, <laughs> yeah, if I only had the science, then it limits me to in-person, right? If I only have the science, I'm limited to in-person knee surgeries, you know, in-person acupuncture, but because I combine it with spiritual, I can do it remotely you know, and it's really amazing. You know, one of my teachers, Dr. and Master Jigong Sha, I literally see him help people stage four cancer who is about to die. And when you see enough of these impossible miracles, that is how I'm so inspired to do what I do because I'm like, great, you know, back to the weaving, right? I'm like, I want to learn from all of these things that I know works. And so, you know, I I do, I have been um, a student of Master Shah for a few years. And I, you know, of course, I haven't had his whole lifetime of experience, but I also pull from Mm -hmm. a lot of the healing technologies that Dr. Shah, you know, teaches. God, that's so good. That's so good. You know, and I think this is great synchronicity because I've been having these conversations for the last couple of days about 
healing and trauma in the body and food as medicine and how, you know, in a general statement, we as uh, humans in the U.S. take so much for granted and we abuse our bodies and we just take a pill to alleviate that and take another pill to alleviate that. And, oh, how could I give up cheese when I'm not supposed to eat dairy? And it's like, they don't listen to their bodies and they're so overconsumptive and over spoiled. And uh, I don't know, this is, I mean, we can go into a whole conversation about all of that, but but just to take that time to to slow down, to listen in, and like you said, to be present, to be present. And self-care, I mean, as a coach, that's one of my biggest things is to get my clients to stop and listen and connect and meditation and journaling and movement, you know, creating that magic. So good. What do you think about all that? <laughs> Yeah, you know, so Dr. and Master Ji Gangsha, he co-created Tao Science with a quantum physics PhD. And that book changed my life. He said, you know, if there's like a flow chart, you know, so heart, mind, energy, body. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask the question, yeah, mind over matter. That's important. Like we know that we need to eat better. We know we need to meditate. We know exercise is good for us, but why can't we do it, right? right? Don't you want to know why can't they do it? Why can't I do it? Right. And the answer is because you have to go up the food chain into the soul level, you mm. know? So Oh gosh, that's so good. Mind over matter or mind over body is not enough. We got to do soul Mm. is the boss of everything oh, you guys are listening to this this is so good <laughs> and you know he explains mathematically scientifically what karma is right so you know karma seems like a big scary word okay if you do good you're gonna have good karma if you do bad you have bad karma and you know some of us might practice law of attraction and what I want to say, because I have a computer science degree, karma is just information, right? So everybody has an iPhone, right? The oh. iPhone is running an operating system, uh, aka software. Mm -hmm. So you can think about karma as information or the programming that is in your software, Right. So if you have bugs in your software, let's go get updates, right? iPhone updates. That's why we need iPhone updates. Okay. But we all need updating. <laughs> if you have bugs in your software and you don't update it, that's why the software crashes, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you're in the middle of something and then suddenly it crashes. So, you know, most people who use the iPhone, they don't really understand the operating system behind it, right? And and so as it turns out, we as a collective get to empower and uplift and update each other. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, so there's like my personal karma, which is, okay, am I doing good? Um, Hopefully I'm doing good because I'm going on this podcast and giving you all up. <laughs> but there's also ancestral karma, which is, you know, what did my parents do? My grandparents, great grandparents. And for example, one of my great grandparents, she was a very mm, not so nice landlord that was really pushy about collecting rent and that caused somebody to suffer. So then I carry some negative ancestral karma from my yeah. ancestors. And there's also the collective karma, right? There's the collective karma of Los Angeles, of United States, mm -hmm. of Mother Earth, right? 
So the way I want to give everybody a picture is imagine that my survival depends on drinking water, which is true. I need water to survive. Mm -hmm. And it's not good enough if I just clean the river. Because if I'm one person cleaning the river, but 99 people are dumping heavy metals into the river, I'm still drinking the poison of the river that everybody else is dumping into, right? So I am only as good as how clean the river is. So in other words, also, if all of the listeners on the podcast, if you put in your effort and cleaning up the river. Well, I thank you because I drink cleaner water because you are showing up to do the work, right? Mm -hmm. So basically we are more connected than we can imagine because one person's breakthrough, it ripples out to everybody. Like every one person that shows up to heal themselves everyone is drinking cleaner water, mm -hmm. right? So to me, why I'm so passionate about having this group container for healing. And yes, I, I'd love to give you a free pass actually, so you can check it out. <laughs> um, awesome. So it's because we need each other. Absolutely, absolutely. We're all part of the circle. Exactly. We need to come together in community because only by us cleaning the river together do we have a chance of drinking the clean water. I love that. That's so good. And uh, we forget that we are connected sometimes. And yet that's what we, we are starving for. We want connection. We want to be connected. Uh, we want to be together. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. And, uh, I've just started a couple women's groups in Palm Springs and, you know, they're going crazy for it because they're so hungry, especially after this pandemic and this time of isolation. It's like, get up off the couch. Let's make a difference. Let's do something different. Let's make a change, you know, and it does start with that deeper healing. And I love your, I love your hierarchy. <laughs> That's very cool. Uh, because some people are so afraid connection they want it so bad and they either don't know how to do it they don't know how to get there they don't know how to take the time to listen in okay I have uh, <laughs> some really fun thing to share about that okay. okay good so earlier you talked about diet and choices mm -hmm. you know some people say we are what we eat and it is actually true because, okay, so back to the soul, heart, mind, energy, body, right? What we eat is at the body level, but the body actually also nourishes mm -hmm. the energy, nourishes the mind, nourishes the heart, and nourishes the soul. So our choices in diet is going to determine how easy or how hard it is to connect to our heart and soul. So if our diet is heavy, okay, deep fried Oreo. <laughs> uh, okay. So, but yes, our, yeah. Our soul is like the sun. The mm. sun is always there. But sometimes there are dark clouds that are covering the sun and you cannot see the sun. And then we get depressed because we don't see the sun, but the sun is there even if we cannot see it. But then the question is why some people have permanent dark clouds around their sun and some people, they just seem to be love and light and gratitude all the time, right? Like, Actually, I used to be jealous of those people. I'm like, man, I can't stand those people who are always smiling. 
<laughs> right? Like, what's wrong with them? I'm hurting over here. Why are they always so happy? You know, I used to not understand until I realized it's really choices that I make, such as, you know, if I'm eating deep fried Oreo. <laughs> oh, God, help us. <laughs> I, I, I am putting dark clouds around my sun. Mm, yes. Oh, right? Beautiful. So... I used to judge those people who are always smiling and be like, God, they're so fake. How come they're always smiling? You know, but now I realize it's actually probably because they eat clean, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, one person told me, they're like, okay, if you're always eating dead animals, what is the vibration of your body if you're always eating dead animals? You know, versus if you're eating, you know, let's say raw raspberries. What is the vibration of the raw raspberries? And I was like, oh. And what I realized is I have a choice. My choice is how I show up, right? What is the food choices that I'm making? What are the exercise choices I'm making? And so I am the embodiment of all the choices I've made in mm -hmm. the last, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. absolutely number absolutely. of years that I'm and alive. And when you show up and you participate in your well-being, instead of taking it for granted and just inundating it, you know, or uh, numbing it or not being conscious of your decisions. And that's that's the thing that I see the most is, is unconscious because it's there instead of making the choice to have what you want to be there. That's going to feed you and nourish you and take care of you. Yes, 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 yes. I get very, very passionate about this subject. Um, and yeah, and from the bottom of my heart, I hope that all of the audience will take responsibility without needing a near-death car accident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. We don't need that. No, don't we need don't that. need it. No. <laughs> but, but, you know... I mean, I love that, you know, you were in this bubble because you, the work that you're doing now is so important. And, you know, obviously you're very passionate about it as well. And I love that. And I love the changes that you're making in the world and your clients must be just so freaking over the moon delighted to work with you. Um, and I think that's that's a, a, a good place to end this little little chit chat. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy. Um, but I do want to ask you, Winnie, I want to ask you, so, okay, so you had this accident and you got back into meditation and you became more in touch with yourself and your hierarchy, your soul. And so what do you do now? What do you do to feed yourself? That's a really great question. You know, um, because I'm a nerd, I study the Bible every day. I also study Taoist, Buddhist, yogic texts. And um, so know that if I talk about the Bible, it comes from almost like an academically scholar perspective. So in the Bible, it says the Lord's instructions are already written in your hearts. Mm -hmm. And I think that because of patriarchy, we've had thousands of years where we learn to give our power away to the external authority, right? So this idea that parents know better, teachers know better, doctors know better. And of course, they do know a lot, but ultimately, the ultimate teacher parent and doctor is inside our hearts and so it's really first of all you got to own that you are 
a child of God source universe. Mm -hmm. And that that source power, that authority that you can heal yourself or you can teach yourself or you can guide yourself is right here inside the heart. And so it's really spending quiet time to listen to yourself. I know. So for all the audience listeners out there, if you have digestive issues, you know, diarrhea, constipation, and you get stressed out and you get bloated, okay, all of this is because you are not able to receive yourself, mm. right? You're not able to receive your power, and that's why I hope everybody, oh, actually, I have a free online community. Oh, cool. Good. Yeah. So, and I do a blessing and a healing every Wednesday. It's called <gasps> Wholesome Wednesday. Yeah. So all of you can go onto my website, mindfulhealingheart.com. And if you click on community, you can join the community. And, um, you know, uh, you can also check out my masterclass and the group container is a really wonderful experience and i hope to have an opportunity to oh continue this conversation with you guys oh good oh my god i love you so much <laughs> so great so great and thank you for for doing all that work and also sharing it with us and everybody get in there get in uh, and connect with her and i will also have it all in the show notes all her connections and stuff and when did you write your book Okay, so book one was written um, March of 2022, and I'm actually writing book two. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, book two is called Unlocking Light. Mm. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Do you so know my all... mastermind is called Illumination? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's all about living lit up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's fabulous. Okay, so... You didn't quite answer me. So what do you do for yourself? You you read you read the Bible and you read uh, all these other books of wisdom. What else do you do for yourself? I just look inside my heart. Mm, okay. The instructions are right there. So I I literally look inside my heart. Sweet, sweet. It doesn't take much once you become aware of that type of connection, right? Yeah, you know, I would say that in the beginning, it might take 45 minutes and then maybe it takes 30 minutes and then maybe it takes 15 minutes. But when you start to cultivate it, you can go there in three breaths, mm. right? So um, you just get used to looking into the heart. And for those of you who maybe are new to this and don't know, um, I find yoga to be a very good practice. You know, why we start with up dog and down dog and, you know, and pigeon. And at the end, when we get to the course pose, that is the best time to look inside your heart because you need to move the body and to try to balance on one leg on the tree pose and exhaust the the thoughts and exhaust the body and then you are in a state of surrender and that's the best time to look into your heart mm. right but then if you have this practice where you know you just do it every day like for me I just do it all day <laughs> <laughs> like before I go to bed, I do it. I wake up, I do it. You know, I'm waiting for the water to boil. I do it. So, you know, like I try to stay connected to my heart 24 seven, but if you're an absolute beginner, you have no idea what I talk about. Just go to a yoga class. And then when it gets to course pose, you just look inside your heart. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and I teach yoga every week too. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and belly dance and movement. I mean, it's so important. Movement is so important. So I'm glad you brought that up, but okay. Wow. Well, I know that we could talk about a whole lot of other beautiful 
things. And I hope we can have another conversation, Winnie. And thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you for taking the time. And thank you everyone out there in heart and hustle land for coming and enjoying this conversation. I'd love to know your takeaways, comments, questions. Please connect with Winnie. Please connect with me. If there's anything I can do to assist and guide you as well as your transformational lifestyle coach. And until we meet again, many blessings. <laughs>